Help us today as we have our program. Bless each girl out there, each woman. She has times that I know nothing of, but thou dost know them. In Jesus' name, amen. I was telling you the last program about how my husband suffered a heart attack when he was out with the snowblower. We think that the snowblower must have been breaking because later when our son did it to clean the driveway out, it was broken, it became broken. But so my husband was using his own strength. He came in and he said that day, I, I thought that the machine would do more work, but I had to do so much work. And so he, he uh, had a spell, a terrible spell. But God healed him. And I told you about that last week. And if you want it, that program, just call me, 1-800-JOHN-10-9, and I'll send it to you. I'll send you any of my programs that you want. But my husband said to emails to his friends, I am very grateful to the Lord for using any means necessary for his working of what seemed to all the doctors as a miracle and amazing. To God be the glory, great things he hath done, as Fanny Crosby wrote. During much of this time, Gail Ripplinger, the author of New Age Bible Versions and other publications, was making what appeared to be legal threats against Dr. Weed and me, as well as our oldest son, D.A. Waite Jr. Because we have pointed out some untruths in her recent hazardous material book, she has gotten all worked up, talking to a lawyer about it, seemingly threatening us with a lawsuit and giving us a cut-off date for her actions if we did not do what she demanded us to do in regards to corrections and retractions. What seemed very peculiar to us and many others is that she never once in all her complaining ever mentioned the lie. She told my husband and me about her not ever being married to any other man but her present husband, Michael Ripplinger. The truth is that she has had three legal marriages and two divorces. Gail Ludwig Latessa Kaleda Ripplinger inferred that Dr. Wade has slipped a cog and can't think right. She infers that he is an old man and that younger men are far more qualified to preach and write and think. We are not saying that young men cannot do a work for God, but to infer that Dr. Wade isn't all there is a laughable deduction. My husband, who does not wear glasses, just taught last week in January 1821-2010 at a Chinese seminary in Tawako, New Jersey. He taught seven hours a day for four straight days standing up. The students wonder why he never sat down to teach as their other teachers do, but Dr. Waite believes in stand-up teaching. He does sit down between classes. I went along with my husband to North Jersey and videotaped his lectures. Presently we are putting these teachers on discs, these teachings on discs for you. He taught first and second chronicles, and you're welcome to order them from us if you want to. Just call uh, 1-800-JOHN-1009 and ask for the First and Second, Chron first and second Chronicles series and therefore a gift of $35 plus $5 shipping. The Chronicles speak mainly of the southern kingdoms, kings, and uh, D King David and Rehoboam ruled all of Israel. It was not until after Rehoboam that the kingdom was divided. There were 20 kings that ruled over Judah. Dr. Wade touched on all 20 of these kings. In time, through their disobedience and in un unbelief, the southern kingdom was captured by Nebuchadnezzar, and most of the best and brightest were taken to Babylon. It was interesting and sad to see the workings of the minds and actions of those kings. You will really be edified when you see and hear this wonderful teaching from my husband. Of interest is the fact that my husband is the age of Moses, when Moses first brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea and into their wilderness wanderings, after they came out of the land of Egypt. I am so glad that Gil Ludwig Latessa Kalita Rippingler was not around during Moses' day. She would have tried to discourage Moses, telling him, Oh, you're too old, Moses. The truth is that Moses did his best work after 80. God had called him to do that work. He did not turn his job over to younger Joshua until it was time for him to die. It is good to read how the younger men followed Moses without question, oh, except for the murmurers. There are always murmurers, you know. We read nowhere in the Bible of a hint that Moses was slipping mentally, physically, or emotionally. So with Dr. Waite. Recently he had been healed of congestive heart failure for God's purpose, as we read in Romans 8, 28c. It is amazing. 
All we can surmise since my husband's miraculous recovery is that God has more mountains for my husband to climb. Like Caleb of old, Dr. Waite looks at the mountain of all there is to do in the biblical defense of the King James Bible, as well as other language Bible translated from the proper Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic texts, and realizes that he must not take off his mountain climbing gear. He quotes old Caleb, who must have been eighty or more at the time, when he said, now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord speak. Joshua 14:12a. Remember the time when the battle with the Amalekites was going on and Moses held his hands up high? You remember that one? As long as his hands were high in the air, Israel was winning. If Moses lowered his hands, the Amalekites prevailed. Of interest to me was that Moses' hands were heavy. Aaron and Hur, instead of criticizing their senior, brought a stone for him to sit upon. Also, they held up Moses' hands when he was tired. Instead of criticizing Moses, they helped him. They wanted Israel to win the battle as much as Moses wanted the battle to be won. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. That's from Exodus 17:12. It is amazing to me the work that my husband is able to do for the Lord. And when he was so sick there for a few days, we didn't know if he would be able to. But God did heal him. It is a, a miraculous healing as far as we're concerned. Now, my husband has a new book. I don't. I hope I have time to tell you about it. It's called The First 200 Questions, answered by Dr. D.A. Waite. And I have it right here before me. We don't have a lot of them with me. They're, we're ordering them. That we have the first copy here, and we're waiting for the other ones to come so you can have them. It's The First 200 Questions, answered by Dr. D.A. Waite. Real questions from real people with real answers. And I'm excited to tell you about this. It's, it's a wonderful, it's 184 pages, it's small, and he has many, many questions. Hundreds of people daily email my husband with questions on biblical issues and other matters, and I prevailed upon him to save these questions and answers and put them in a book someday. Well, someday has come. This book, The First 200 Questions Answered by Dr. D.A. Wade, is for a gift of $11 plus $4 shipping and handling. And you know, right before I began the program, I asked him how much the book was. And I think we put the wrong price in here. And I think I'm telling you this price. So this is really a bargain price if you want this book. Call 1-800-JOHN-109 and ask for this first 200 question book and for a gift of $11 plus shipping and handling. Well, Dr. Re Wade gives his reason for another question and answer book. Though other writers, and I'm quoting him, have written books giving their answers to many questions, I thought another such book might be in order. Some of the answers are not in other books. Some questions are answered differently than others have answered them. This book, which you can ask for, has an elaborate seven-page index of words and phrases which are not found in many books. I'm looking at this book right now, and I really think you would, you would really like it. I really do. I'm going to look through some here and tell you what some of the questions are. It's all divided up into different uh, different categories, and I think you, you'd like it. There's questions on the King James Bible. There's questions on the Texas Receptus. There's questions on the inspiration of the Bible, Bible translation problems, Bible interpretation, Hebrew and Old Testament, questions on Bible preservation, questions on various Bible versions, questions on Bible verses, and questions on doctrinal positional problems and various texts of the Bible, and questions on officers and women preachers, and questions on the family, wives, and children, and many miscellaneous topics, topics and questions on standards. You will really, really, really enjoy reading these, and it's very, very informative. I'm, I'm sure, like, is the King James inspired? And he answers about that. And uh, that's a great big uh, argument that people have. I, I, he says, I disagree completely and totally that you can extend these inspired words to careful translations of the traditional text. And he goes on, this is a, this is a must-have book to understand what some of these answers are. And then it 